All right, uh, Southern Swing, we're here in Atlanta. Uh, this is not a recruit. <laughs> we, uh, we're normally out, out here talking to recruits. We've taken a little bit of a detour. We are with quarterback guru uh, Quincy Avery, who is based here out of Atlanta. Um, a guy that I think a lot of Ohio State fans uh, are aware of at this point, but uh, for, for those that aren't, uh, he's worked with Dwayne Haskins and Justin Fields uh, in terms of Ohio State type guys, but he's also worked with Deshaun Watson, Pat Mahomes, and a, and a bunch of big names. Uh, one of the best, uh, one of the best to do it. So, um, how are we doing today, Quincy? I'm doing excellent. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Um, you know, just want to kind of jump right into it. Uh, the, the Justin Fields thing was kind of one of the biggest stories uh, this off season so far in college football. You you know Justin. You've worked with Justin. What did you know? What kind of what are your thoughts on on the fit there, and, and and what Ohio State could be getting there? I think it's an amazing fit. Justin Fields does a lot of things that uh, kind of marries with Ohio State offense, um, from his ability to like distribute the ball to his ability to extend plays with his legs, um, and even to be able to do some things in design run game um, that could kind of bring back some of the old philosophies and principles that you saw with Ohio State previous to Dwayne Haskins. Um, but I think what you're going to see more than anything this year is. Ohio State do a lot more pro concepts. I'm not sure if people are aware of just how talented Justin Fields is in the passing game. Um, I've seen him since he was a young, young guy, since he's about ninth grade. Seen him develop, uh, and his ability to do things with the ball, with his arm, is is better than than almost anybody had ever seen at that age. And he's only continued to develop. So what they're getting is someone who's really, really special, really, really gifted, and and can, who can win the game with their arms. But it's super dynamic with their legs, and you know, obviously, we we don't want to go off the rails with the hype machine here with with, uh, with Justin necessarily. But I mean, you have worked with guys like like Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, mm -hmm. what what is Justin's ceiling? I mean, does he is he an NFL ceiling? Oh, I mean, definitely he's an NFL ceiling. He's he's physically as gifted as anybody that you'll see. Um, but but the things that make him special is his ability to lock in and do the detailed work. I can. Think back to him going to the Elite 11 um, before his senior year in high school. Um, and it's just the ability to understand, grasp, and go to work on that offense, which is like a pro, pro playbook. Um, the things that we're throwing at them, we're throwing a lot of different concepts. The way we're asking to read things um, from pure progression, which is we always read things one to two to three, to progression with options where they might set their eyes. Uh, in a different location based on the coverage and the safety rotation. He did all those things and he did them at such a high level. Um, and that was just a mental aspect and we know how gifted he is with his arm. Yeah, I mean, demeanor wise, I mean, you've, you've talked about how the mental uh, is, is all there. You know, what type of type of kid is he? I mean, he's, I think a lot of people want to learn more about him, uh, especially Ohio State fans who maybe didn't follow him as much in high school as, as some other uh, fan bases may have. I mean, what type of kid uh, is, is Justin? For sure, Justin is just a calm and quiet leader. Um, he's not going to be a guy who's a big rah-rah guy, but I think you guys had that in your last quarterback. Someone who's the same, pretty quiet, pretty calm. But the things that they did helped their teammates understand the level of expectations that, that needs to be met um, and, and how they need to carry themselves as a player and as a Buckeye. And I think he's going to be a great ambassador of the program. Uh, you kind of transitioned into that pretty well. Uh, you know, Dwayne Haskins, another guy you've worked with um, in the off seasons. Um, were were you surprised at what he did in his one year at Ohio State, or you know, kind of you know, how did you take that as as you're watching him shatter records? I was probably least surprised than anybody in the country. I think that people saw me. I mean, if they were paying attention to things I was saying before the season, um, I said very very early, almost before the season that. Um, the odds are that Dwayne Haskins is not going to be at Ohio State very long. <laughs> I had seen him throw the football, and I had seen him throw the football in workouts with a bunch of NFL guys, and it was throw for throw. And then when we started really dialing in on, on the Ohio State things and the schemes, and he started walking me through not only what the linemen are doing, every single protection, but what linemen need to be doing on the run plays from where they're going to be pointing to or where they're working to and even their footwork. And I'm like, if he has this good of an understanding of what you guys are trying to do as a whole, um, from every position top down on the Ohio State offense, there was no way that he wasn't going to be successful. We were going to see his his skills come out, and I think that everybody did, 50 touchdowns, seven interceptions. You don't see stuff like that from guys in their first year starting. And people are like, it was only one year. Yeah, it was only one year, but imagine what he'd done in year two, year three. The things that he, were, that he did in that one year of football is probably better than any Ohio State quarterback that we've seen thus far. Yep. 
Um, you know, were you surprised with the slip on draft? I mean, it's not, it's not like he slipped out of the first round or anything like that, but, you know, I think a lot of people thought he would go in the top 10 and maybe even the top five. Um, you know, what was your take watching that and kind of, you know, how that all shook out? Well, I had a, a really good idea on where he was going um, and, and really good idea on when he would be drafted. So it wasn't as a, a big of a surprise to me, and I don't think it was a, um, a huge surprise or shock to people who are really in the know. Um, when you really start getting in, you start working towards that part of the season or the draft season, you start to get a good gauge on exactly what people are looking for, who they're interested in, and the things that they, they wanted. And we really knew pretty early that the Giants were going to go in the d direction of Daniel Jones. And it, not necessarily about the talent or the way that they threw the ball. It's just some things that they may might have liked about Daniel Jones and his fit with Cutcliffe and his fit with Eli, and, and that's the kind of direction that they chose to go in. But after that point, it was like, all right, maybe Miami's going to take him, maybe Cincinnati, and if not, we know he'll be going to the Redskins at 15. Um, I, I had the opportunity to speak a lot with Kevin O'Connell, the offensive coordinator for the Redskins, um, and I bounced a lot of ideas off him for Dwayne Haskins Pro Day. Um, so it's a lot of things that he did there was a component of me having those conversations with him, things that he wanted to see. So I knew he did everything that he wanted to see, and he checked off all those boxes, did a great job with his interviews. Um, so I think that he went to the perfect spot. I mean, it seems like the only real knock on Dwayne is, you know, that magical 20 starts number that, that people look at is, is experience, things like that. I mean, that aside, I mean, how I mean, how surprised would you be if he wasn't a really good NFL quarterback? I mean, I'd be shocked, mm -hmm. um, and especially going to the situation he's going into. He gets to go to offensive coordinator and head coach who are really, really uh, involved in the quarterback position. They, they're going to be um, there with him step for step. Um, and as his development through the quarterback process goes, they're going to put an offense that's quarterback friendly, going to give him the, every opportunity to be successful. Um, and, of course, he didn't get the 20 starts, so maybe he doesn't start at the beginning of the year, and that's, that's going to be okay. Um, but I know he's going to work every single day, and he's going to be prepared as any other quarterback out there. So this team's going to be successful when he steps on the field.